Hey Wizard, so I've been trying not to do a video about this, but it's got to the point where it's so ridiculous that I can't help myself. So ChatGPT, I think is amazing. And I think it's amazing for reasons that I haven't really heard much about, which is why I'm doing this video. Um, I'm gonna put into ChatGPT here, explain how quantum computing works like I am five years old. And I haven't prepared for this video at all, by the way, but these are the kind of things that I've been interacting with the AI on. I've been asking it technical questions about Rust, about things that I've gone through courses on, I've read books on, and it didn't make sense to me. And I have learned things about those topics, which I know are correct because it gave me the insights I needed to go and research those things to validate it. I know they're correct and I was able to learn them far, far quicker than I was through traditional means. And that absolutely blows my mind. So here it's responses, quantum computers are special kinds of computers, etc. The typical kind of stuff you hear. I'm not going to read through all of it. You've been able to see it on the screen. But I'm now going to take it a step further and say something along the lines of give me an example of how to encode and decode a problem using a quantum computer. And it will, of course, go ahead and do that. Now, one of the things I've really been struggling to understand with quantum, for example, is how do problems get encoded and decoded? How do you think about how to encode a problem and decode a problem? It's like the reason why it's so difficult to understand quantum computing, I think, is because there's really three main elements to it. It doesn't work like your typical programming. I'm just I'm not just writing a program. It runs and everything's good. I have to really think about these qubits and how to encode the problem into those qubits, etc. So this is quite fascinating. So it says, okay, for example, suppose we want to find the shortest path through a maze. We could represent a maze as a series of ones and zeros with ones representing walls and zeros representing open spaces. To encode this problem for a quantum computer, we could use quantum gates. Okay, so it's saying, okay, that's how you could encode the problem. This is the problem. This is how you encode it. To decode the solution to the problem, we would use quantum measurements to read the final state. So that's great. That gives me some info, but I still don't understand. So I could say, um, please explain more about, uh, so here to decode this, we could use quantum measurements to read the final state of the qubits. Reading, how reading the final state, the final state of the qubits works. And I could just go like this and, and keep drilling into what it's saying to try to understand more. Now, after about five back and forths, I was playing around with this this morning, I kind of got to the end of how that AI could communicate. And, you know, arguably here, I'm asking it some really dumb questions and I'm clearly not reading the information it's giving to me. And also some of the information it gives is wrong. So it's not always getting everything right. But I think the thing I want to point out for anyone following this channel is that when it comes to teaching yourself something, whether it's quantum computing or programming, etc., you're going to be able to ask an AI direct specific questions that relate to exactly what you're looking for without having to buy lots of books, go on lots of courses, etc., etc., etc. If an AI is trained in the right way, like this one has been with human feedback, um, and actually, they use reinforcement learning with human feedback in training chat GPT. It's going to change how quickly we learn and how we actually go about learning. So I thought that was just something really uh, interesting to show. Um, I've never really coded with C++, like I've used Rust and Python and all that. Or actually, let's use Python because I know a lot of the folk who follow the channel are interested in Python. I could say, you know, please code, uh, please code me a bot in Python which connects to the Binance API. Let's see, let's just see how it does. And I'm throwing lots of random things at this now to see how it performs. I mean, <laughs> uh, 
This is absolutely insane. It's like it's seen every single library and been trained on it on GitHub or something. I don't know. Um, it, like literally, I didn't actually think it would do this, but it has. It knows what Binance library to use. I was hoping it would use something like Python requests or something like that. But the fact that not only can I ask it that question and it can actually go and get me something like this, which will work, by the way, this will work. Binance client with your API secret price equals futures price BTC. Is, yeah, that should basically work is absolutely nuts. So imagine an AI that is trained specifically just on Python, on trading, or any specific topic, any narrow topic, and it's had the money spent on it that ChatGPT has. Just imagine where that's going. So for any of you who have not seen or looked at ChatGPT, this is too big to be ignored. Like I'm literally using it now for my own personal use, for things that I need to know, etc. I wouldn't want to start a week now knowing I don't have ChatGPT. That's a, how big a deal I think these things are actually going to become. So with that said, let's not take up more time till the next one. Take care. Talk soon.